okay mr that day we were talking about mac layer right so in mac layer we were talking about many uh, many multiple access technique also we have seen what is csma by csma uh, carrier sensing uh, detection and also avoidance right these are the things uh, when i come to csma by cd i mean carrier sense multiple access with uh, collision detection this is the flow chart that day i didn't show you the flow chart exactly what happens in carrier how it senses and how the collision detection how it waits uh, for certain uh, random time in csma with cd we will wait only we will wait randomly it's not like whenever we frequently sense the carrier we will sense the carrier uh, like we sending some symbols in the initial and if it is and if it is collision detected like if collision happens to the those symbols then what we'll do is some random amount of time and then we'll be sending this uh, messages again so uh, there is possibility that collision right so if collision occurs it will wait for certain time like that can be the random time and then it will start again okay if you see this flow chart first start after that assembly frame this is the like uh, everything will be transmitted in terms of uh, frames right so that frame and uh, attempt one like suppose this is a counter kind of thing here for the first attempt we are checking if some other uh, if some other station is transmitting like if other station is transmitting there may be possible of collision so we'll be sensing the since, since we are sensing the uh, carrier or we are sensing the channel uh, so that some other if some other transmitters may transmit uh, we have to detect those collisions and we have to send it again so if some other if some other uh, station is transmitting the signal we'll increase the attempt and uh, we'll again send it we'll wait like here if you see uh, yes attempt plus plus we are increasing the attempt count and then what we are doing if if again we'll try to send again uh, after increasing the attempt here we'll wait for some random amount of time after waiting for random amount of time we'll try for another station is transmitting it is simply yes so we'll again try to give some other attempt so if that if that time it may succeed like uh, no other station is suppose no other station is transmitting at that time then what we'll do is we'll transmit the first frame because if collision occurs the entire frame will be lost so what we'll do is we'll transmit only the first bit of the frame we'll see if collision is detected see while transmitting there may not be some other uh, stations transmitting after you transmit it some other station may not sense that you are transmitting and it may start uh, sending some data right so in that case collision happens uh i think uh, you are aware of that uh, uh, far and the near terminals hidden terminals and exposed terminals what are the problems associated with uh, that when it is when the terminal is hidden and when it is exposed right those uh, things will come into the picture so because of that collision may happen so what we'll do is we'll just send the first bit and we'll see if that collision if for that first bit collision occurred or not if collision is occurred then what we'll do is we'll for um, we'll increase the attempt number and we'll wait for some random amount of time here if you see uh, attempt greater than uh, and we also have maximum attempts we'll give some maximum attempts will be configured by upper layers or configured by us and based on the maximum attempts like we'll try to transmit it again and again even if collision occurs more than the maximum number of times then simply we'll say like no transmission is possible and we'll just discard that frame here if you see attempt when attempt becomes greater maximum attempt no transmission is possible okay so we are unable to transmit because there may be many conditions like channel is not good and uh, cases so many of them are transmitting this time so uh, depending on this uh, value of the max attempt we'll giving that many number of attempts and then if it is not possible then simply we'll discard that uh, pd or uh, that frame and the uh, no transmission will be possible if our number of attempts is not greater than maximum attempt then we'll wait for some random time here rand of 16 the random time can be in milliseconds that will be in milliseconds and here it is of 16 milliseconds and we'll wait and then uh, wait wait minus minus like here also in he is taking 16 and for 16 he is doing it uh, he is decrementing every time so whenever he decrements like he is waiting it is greater than 0 then only he is giving another attempt so first it will be 16 milliseconds and after that you are uh, 
you are uh, decrementing that so again it will be 15 that will be greater than 0 so again we again that uh, he'll what he'll be doing is he'll be re giving the attempt and then uh, again the same will be followed if collision is detected then transmit next suppose we are sending the first bit of the frame right so whenever collision is detected transmit next bit of the <coughs> frame if it is de collision is detected what we'll do is we'll try another time if collision is not detected we'll transmit the ne next bits okay yeah we'll transmit and uh, after that again we'll check for if transmission if the entire frame is uh, sent or not we'll check the condition and if entire transmission is finished then we can say the transmission is successful yeah is it clear or you are having any doubt in this the simple thing is we'll wait for some random amount of time and then we'll start sending the signals or sending the messages that time collision may occur so what we'll be doing is we'll be sending only some part that may be a first bit of the uh, frame so if that if for that collision occurs or if that if for that bit collision doesn't occur then we'll start sending the remaining bits if collision occurs we'll be uh, sending that uh, same bit after some random amount of time say simple thing if you see this flowchart you will be clear it is clear right So here collision happens. This is nothing but we are able to detect the collisions, but we are not able to avoid the collisions. So this is called as collision detection. Is it clear or you have any doubt to respond? Yeah, I'm continuing. Hope you don't have any doubts. And uh, this is the other thing is CSMA with uh, collision avoidance. There we are detecting, here we are avoiding. I hope it is not clear. This image is not clear, right? Actually, here in uh, collision avoidance, I think this is not clear. I, you can browse for this image, you will get it in net. And uh, in this, how we will be avoiding collision is, here we will be having clear to send and uh, request to send. Like there are two signals and we will be using these two signals in order to avoid the collision. So here what we will be doing is, we will be starting this and we will be assembling. If the channel is ideal, then we will be, like, we'll be transmitting request to send. We'll have, we are having one transmitter and also one receiver. So whenever this wants to, this transmitter wants to send something, it will be uh, giving some signal kind of thing to receiver. It will check if receiver is free or not. For that purpose, we'll be using request to send message. So here, if you see this flowchart, is that it will check if the channel is ideal. If the channel is ideal, it will send transmit request to send message to receiver. If the receiver is free, then it will send that, okay, you can transmit the data. I am free to listen to you. Then what it will do is, it will uh, it will be sent to uh, transmitter. The receiver will send that clear to send. It will send request to send and the receiver will send clear to send. If that is... Actually, if this slow chat... Is it okay now? Little better? Why should I zoom in? Yeah, I hope it is clear. So here, uh, 
we are avoiding the collisions how we are avoiding what we are having is as i told you we are having transmitter and receiver Tr transmitter will be whenever it want to send something it will be sending request to send if you see here uh, the one which who needs to transmit and the terminal which wants to transmit it will check for the channel condition if the channel is idle it will transmit request to send message to receiver then the receiver will be receiving this and if it is yes if the if the receiver is clear enough and uh, it doesn't have anything to transmit then it will say yeah i am ready to take your uh, messages and then it will send clear to send if it is received that clear to send it will send and after that transmission of data will happen and the other case is if the channel is not idle then it will wait for some random amount of time. that can be uh, clear in this flowchart it will wait for some random amount of time that uh, random amount call it as back of time and after waiting for random amount of time it will transmit again and again, in the sense it will check for the channel condition again and even then if it is not idle channel is idle again it will be waiting this happens till the channel is free once the channel is free again this will be sending rts and if receiver transmitter has sent request to send message but the receiver is not free it is serving some other terminals maybe then what it will uh, do is it will ask like it um, wait for random uh, receiver will be saying receiver won't send that clear to send message then it will wait for again some random amount of time and it will again check for the channel and it will transmit it again request to send if that uh, receiver is free it will send clear to send message if it is not free i am not clear i am unable to serve you serve your purpose it will say like that and after again random amount of time will, will be like a transmitter will wait for random amount of time and again it will be sending the uh, message this is the thing like since we are we don't there in, in uh, collision detection we will be having hidden and x if the terminal is hidden we can't see uh, see if some uh, in if you are having three to four signals, if some terminal is hidden whenever you are transmitting signals the other stations may receive the signals some collision will happen since one terminal is hidden there in the exposed terminals even though you the other terminal is transmitting to some other terminal which is not in between since it is exposed we are blocking the channel from transmitting the signals right so these are hidden and far problems here we don't have that kind of thing since once receiver approves our thing then only will transmit the data if receiver is not free then we don't send so here by this like by using these things we are able to uh, avoid collisions okay i hope it is clear yeah these are some of the differences uh, csma collision detection takes effect after a collision while csma ca takes effect before a collision right here in cd uh, we'll send first cuts then we'll again uh, transmit that retransmit that bit if collision doesn't occur then we'll transmit the other bits so here the effect will be after collision whereas in csma ca we'll be taking precautions in order the collision and CSMA CA reduces the possibility of a collision while CSMA CD only minimizes the recovery time. Right? Here we are avoiding the collisions, whereas here we are just detecting it and we are trying to retransmit it. We are trying to minimize the uh, things, but here we are not completely avoiding that. So detection is possible here, whereas avoidance is possible in CSMA CA. CSMA CA is typically used in wide networks, while avoidance is used in wireless networks also. Okay. Mainly CSMA CD is used in Ethernet and LAN cables, these kind of things. CA is used both in wireless and wide things. Okay. This thing is explained by me in the previous session. I hope you are clear enough. And this is also done. See, this is the thing I thought of showing you the in the last session. Yeah, here if you see when we talk about media access, these are the things how it is classified is here uh, we are having basically SDMA, TDMA, FDMA and CDMA. This thing, you know what is SDMA like whenever coverage area, SDMA in the sense space, space is divided into some sectors. So it may be three sectors, it depends like as I told you the population and uh, antenna size, antennas, height of the antenna, these things are the major factors. Uh, 
directional antennas, beam forming antennas, good at it I guess because I explained what is multiplexing and the same thing follows here we are dividing the slots time between multiple users. In FDMA uh, this is a pair of frequencies are allocated to the users and in CDMA we are having some random sequence okay that is pseudo sequence. Uh, this is CDMA. So under TDMA again we are having fixed networks, Aloha, CSMA, reservations, table access with collision avoidance and polling. These are the things we come under TDMA. We discussed what we don't, we generally we, the thing which is like TDMA, the normal TDMA is the fixed TDMA which is used in GSM. Aloha we know what is pure Aloha and what is slotted Aloha, how these uh, things, what are the difference between them, how, how the uh, slot boundary is maintained in uh, slotted aloha. These things are uh, explained, right? In CSMA also, we are having collision avoidance, collision detection. Okay, and again, this is also done like demand uh, assist multiple access reservations. Like we'll be reserving in prior those things, and the other things will be multiple access with collision avoidance. Just now, I have explained what is collision avoidance, and the other thing will be polling. These are the things which come under TDMA. And in FDMA, we have fixed things and FHSS is nothing but frequency hopping. As I told you, uh, frequency hopping in the sense, uh, instead of having, like, if you say modulation, one carrier, one message signal. Is continuously, this is nothing but hopping. So the carrier, if the carrier frequency is hopped, then it is called as frequency hopping spread spectrum. Okay, and CDMA it is direct sequence spread spectrum that will be coming in the next slides. And the other thing is polling that will be coming in the next slides. And these things which are part of your syllabus are covered in the coming slides. Okay. Yeah, this is the flow chart for, I mean, this is the uh, some diagram which represents which falls under which uh, access technique. Basically we have four under that these are the parts like these are the enhancements like first we'll do something and after that we'll be coming to know the pause and the cons of each one that we'll be going to some other technique. So this is how that came into the picture like multiple things came into the picture and uh, this is TDMA as you know the fixed thing and this is Aloha and slotted Aloha which was explained and this is demand access multiple access. If you go through slides, I hope you remember what I told you. Uh, this is explicit reservation. We are having two in DMA. We are having two things: explicit, implicit, and uh, PRM. This is explicit, and this is implicit reservation. Yeah, and reservation and TDMA. Till here, I think I explained. And here, the other thing is MAC A. The other thing, these are all the things which are coming and which are explained come under TDMA as you have uh, seen in that picture. So in MAC A, like we are avoiding the collision, the same thing like uh, whatever is applicable in CSMA CA, like how we are avoiding the collisions, the same thing will be coming over here. But uh, like, uh, but uh, we are having some more things equipped with the message. Let's see what those things are. In MAC A, this is nothing but multiple access with collision avoidance. So you are avoiding the collision even though multiple users are trying to access we are avoiding the collisions uses short signaling packets for collision avoidance in cd uh, in csma by cd they are using short like first bit for transmission like that we are having small packets which are of less duration in order to avoid the collisions those packets are nothing but request to send and clear to send messages the same thing request to send a sender requests the right to send from a receiver with a short rts packet before it sends a data packet okay this these two things are major signaling messages because of which we'll be able to avoid the collisions so it will be sending the uh, sender will be sending the request to send message which will be a small packet which lasts for only a small duration of time and the other thing will be this is this thing will be sent by the receiver ctl clear to send the receiver grants the right to send as soon as it ready it is ready to receive so it this rts like suppose there is one, uh, there are multiple transmitters and there is only one receiver so whenever you uh, whenever all the transmitters are transmitting at the same time but the receiver may not serve all the things then what it will do is only for one thing it will send cts but for the other things it won't send anything then what 
the other term other transmitters like uh, who requested uh, rts will wait for certain time and then again uh, they'll try to send rts at least at that time it may be free and it may serve the some other maybe two to three terminals right so the same thing which i explained will be followed here and what it contains is whenever you are whenever we say like we are sending some packets definitely it will contain from where it is coming and to where it is going and what is the size of packet okay so when uh, when i spoke about circuit switching and packet switching uh, in gsm we are having circuit switching whereas in gprs we are having packet switching in the sense packet switching in a sense you are sending every whenever you are sending packets that pack, you are sending that packets in bytes right whenever you are sending it may be there may be possibility that uh, packets may or oh, like interfere each other so for that purpose like interference in sense we are having some packets and we are sending to some random look uh, every packets like the transmitters packet will be sent through the common wire right so for that purpose for uh, distinct having gateways in between so that gateways will take care of i think uh, these things were explained like what is masking and what is subnet masking in the tcp and ip protocol things right so based on the gate the gateway will detect which one is for this purpose each gateway will be having one ip and based on that it will detect which packet is for uh, which destination and it will route the packets to assign destinations okay so for that purpose each packet has uh, since multiple transmitters are sending to the common wire or common for every packet will be having one sender address like who is sending receiver address and what is the packet okay yeah and uh, variants of this can uh, variants of this method can be found in ieee 802.1 this is a standard i think you all know this so this is maca this is similar to csma ca okay maca examples is like c maca avoids the problems of hidden terminals i think you yeah, now you are aware how we uh, uh, how it avoids the problems of hidden terminals now if you see the same thing which I, uh, which i explained in the previous session a and c like we are having 3 a b and c and a and c want to send to b like a and c both want to send to b since this is hidden terminal a sends request to rts like a will be sending the request since c is hidden from a whatever request is sent it may reach c also but only b can serve only a right it i think you are clear a sends rts first c waits after receiving cts from b c will, b will send clear to send request but whenever c receives this it will come to know that i didn't send any rts but still i received cts i mean whenever it receives this cts here the cts will have like it is not c will uh, know that the cts is not assigned to me so whenever some it will know that's okay b is serving some other station so i can't send I, like it is not the correct time me to send if i want to transmit it is not correct time to send rts now because whenever c receives the cds it will come to know that it b is already serving some other station and uh, if you see exposed terminals everything is exposed here all the three know each other uh, so whenever b wants to sends to a c to other terminal b wants to send to a and c is uh, trying to send to some other terminal so now c doesn't have to wait for it so in the previous thing in uh, exposed problem so what happens is c will look and uh, whenever c looks for the channel c will looks c looks for the channel and whenever c looks for the channel it will see like since the every channel like, like every terminal is exposed it will come to know that okay some transmission is happening but since here now we are having rts rts is transmitted to both of them after seeing this rts c wants to send only to a so it will transmit it will broadcast that RT, rts to a by seeing that that will be c also by seeing that c will come to know that okay some transmission is happening between b and a but the transmission is not related to me so if i want to send some other transmission like to some other term i can't transmit to b but i can transmit to some other terminals that may be b, d e which is at some other location or some at some other distance so like this since we are having this signal rts and cts we are able to avoid these two things i hope hope it is clear
my gradient uh, here here if you see the same thing uh, first sender is idle and then he'll wait for some write to send message if if the write to send message if the receiver will receive this write to send message and it will give if it is ready to receive the data it will give some ag like the sender will wait for ag if no ag is received then it, again it will try to transmit the data if the ag is received then it will transmit the data like positive acknowledgement and negative acknowledgement will be there whichever is received will like whichever is ready which for which we have sent cts that is ag for which cts then it will be called as nag and uh, transmit the bit wait for some random time and send it again the same thing at the receiver it will wait for uh, data if for rts both we have ags for uh, uh, both if the receiver is given with uh, if the receiver gives cts then we will send the data okay and polling mechanisms uh, coming to polling polling is nothing but we have we are having some group of terminals but the group of terminals has some common controller kind of thing okay see if one terminal can be heard by all terminals this central terminal can, can poll all the other terminals according to certain scheme of uh, detecting the channel every time we'll be having is we are having some central like controller in between like uh, there are many transmitters and we have some controller so what we'll do since this control is connected to every each and every transmitter this controller will like some scheduler kind of thing this controller will schedule like okay uh, transmit this uh, will give some uh, this time this slot to this transmitter and after that it, it will only schedule when which uh, transmitter should send the data that is nothing but polling okay so here we'll be having some central some central terminal which will poll all the other terminals polling in the sense which will give permission or which will ask to send the uh, data at this particular amount of time uh, to the terminals so this is nothing but central terminal the important thing is uh, it is a central terminal which can poll all the other terminals according to certain scheme now all the schemes known from fixed networks can be used Oh, yeah and uh, randomly addressed polling like uh, there are uh, one example is this randomly addressed polling based like randomly it will poll uh, suppose here base station signals base station signals readiness to all mobile terminals we are having base station under the base station as you know in the gsm architecture or any architecture of course it has many mobile terminals under to all the mobile terminals it will send yeah i am ready to uh, receive the signals to all the mobile terminals terminals ready to send out transmit a random number without collision with the help of cdma or ftma the random number can be seen as dynamic address so, so what happens is uh, it has broadcasted some message like i am ready to take the bts transmitted this broadcast address then mobile stations like terminals what will they do is they'll send each of them select some random number and they'll try to send that random number to base station with the help of either cdm or ftma these techniques using these techniques they'll send some random number to base station the base station now chooses one address from polling so now it will be having a list of random numbers so from that random number choose one one number one number in the sense it selected some terminal and it will give some time to the terminal and once it is served again clear that list it, like in the sense it will clear the terminal from that list the random number related to the terminal from that list and it will serve some other list some other uh, terminal in the sense some other random number related to some other terminal Same thing. <coughs> sorry <coughs> the base station now chooses one address from the po one address for polling from the list of random numbers collision if two uh, possible day is that, that since we are saying random numbers each mobile station like uh, if you have 100 there is possible day that maybe two of them selected the same random number so only at that time a collision may occur this is one of the disadvantage when we speak about polling okay so collision if two terminals choose the same address and uh, the base station acknowledges correct packets and continues polling the next terminal so whatever random number it selected it will send uh, the packets and uh, it will make sure that everything is in sync and everything is reached by the receiver and then it will continue polling the next terminal 
uh, this cycle starts again after polling all the terminals of the list. It first time it received some maybe some if you think there are some ten terminals, it received ten random numbers. In the ten turn uh, in the ten random numbers, it will give based on it will choose randomly the random numbers also and based on that it will serve all the ten. Again, this same thing happens in the next cycle. Again, uh, it will poll. It will ask the transmit. It will ask the mobile stations like it will broadcast some message like I'm ready to uh, receive anything. Then again, they'll sending random numbers like this process continues. Once everything is served, then only it will make sure that when it uh, got request from ten terminals, it will serve all the ten requests. Then only it will start the second cycle. Okay. So only the disadvantages, even that random number can be same. That address can be same. This is only uh, only. Uh, the only thing where collision happens in polling. It is clear, right? Or I am going a little bit faster. Actually, once this is done, we'll uh, go through GPRS once. If that is done, I think most of the Mac is covered. If some more things are uh, there, I, I if you have any doubts, uh, you can get back to me. Okay. Next session will be on data dissemination and those things. Database part will be coming to the picture from next session. Okay, this is uh, uh, inhibit sense multiple access. Inhibit sense in the sense, uh, see if you see this current state of the medium is signal via a busy tone. So if whenever you are uh, calling to some other person, if he's on call, if it's like before calling each other, if he's on some other call, then you will be getting engaged, right? Since he is uh, call waiting, you will be getting so these kind of things. And if he is busy calling some other person, then busy tone. These things will be there in inhibit uh, sense multiple access. Okay, current state of the medium is signaled via a busy tone. So if it is free, it will send like it will normal ringtone. How we will be getting whenever we call some other person will be coming. Coming. If it is not, if he is not free or if he is calling some other person, then you will be intimated with some busy tone. Like so, what we are doing is we are trying to sense the channel with some tone, with some signal. That is nothing but. Uh, sensing a medium. So current state, current state of the medium. Medium is signaled via a busy. If the base station, uh, if the base station signals on the downlink, base station to terminals, if the medium is free or not, base station will signal like in downlink in the sense you know what is downlink and uplink, right? Downlink in the sense, uh, downlink in the sense. Uh, base station to mobile station, whereas uplink in the sense up UV to I mean mobile station to uh, base station. So base station will be sending the signals in the downlink if the medium is free or not. Okay. Terminals must not send if the medium is busy. Okay. In case if medium is busy, terminals won't respond to this. Okay. Is it on stops? So whenever since uh, base station like base station and the medium is not free then the user will be getting some busy tone and then user can't send anything in the sense user can't speak with the person so unless and until that busy tone is uh, shut down then only will we can make some other call right when he is busy he we can't be served with the call of that person right so terminal should wait so terminal must not send if the medium is busy even though you you send that won't be reached right then uh, terminals can access the medium as soon as the busy tone stops the same thing whenever you make a call the same thing will be uh, coming here the only thing is we are just able to sense the current state of the medium so the terminal sends as soon as the busy tone stops normal ringtone comes then the terminal can access the medium and he can make the call or message what he wants to do the base station signals collision successful transmissions via the base and acknowledgement and here you also have acknowledgements okay uh, so the base station signals collisions and success transmissions via the busy tone and acknowledgements respectively so media access is not coordinated with this approach it may not be coordination right whenever you are uh, saying like uh, some other mm, see multiple users are trying to transmit at the same time then we say there is coordination if there is some schema which will schedule okay transmit at this time and transmit some other time uh, then we can say there is coordination since one other person is getting stopped because of uh, that person is in on other call since you are getting busy tone we can't say this is 
something uh, coordinated this is this can come under something uncoordinated okay mechanisms used are this integrated to, into amps this usa these things yeah this is cdma i hope what i hope you know what is your multiple uh, here what we are doing is we'll be having some we'll be selecting some random uh, sequence pn sequence and this sequence will be you will will be uh, uh will be like uh, we are having some message signal and the top of message signal like how we do our modulation the same thing we will be using this uh, pn sequence both of them together will give some output that output will be sending into the air in the sense sending out and at the receiver also that receiver also will have the same code with the help of this code whatever is um, used by the transmitter that code will be shared with receiver only that receiver can decode the uh, signal but right. similar to modulation you are having message signal that carrier signal we are having this in bits bits form and this carrier signal like this bits are used uh, for this pins is used for encrypting the signal pn signal is nothing but suppose this is a code word this is some encryption key this key will be <coughs> used for uh, modulation so once multiple receivers will be receiving the signal but none of them will be able to decode but except the one who has the same key so this key will be shared to the receiver only to that particular receiver only to that assigned receiver will be sharing this key only that person will be capable of decoding that and he will be receiving the signal even though some other persons try uh, decoding the signal they have some other key the key doesn't match and they are unable to decode like this protection security will be more feature and also we can serve the more number of users when compared to tdma and fdma i hope you know how we are able to serve uh, many users because the, in fdma we are having only pay, they are allocating pair of frequencies to each user which is waste of bandwidth and also when they don't use it will be a wastage of bandwidth right whereas in tdma it is little bit better in tdma because they are sharing the some time like time slots between multiple users that in that case also if the particular user is not using his entire slots which was allocated that is also a wastage of bandwidth here <coughs> sorry here the thing is uh, you since you are having some encrypted key if we use like key generation like pn sequence generation won't be an issue because we, when we increase the number of bits we will have more number of sequences like more number of uh, signals and more number of pn sequences so because of that more number of users can work right you got my point right since we have many sequences like if you take if it is two we can have four and if it is three eight eight sequences we can have like if it is ten two part ten sequences we'll be having like this we'll be have we can generate any number of sequences so because of this we can solve many number of users. Let's go into detail. Uh, CDMA is nothing but code division multiple access. All terminals send on the same frequency, probably at the same time, and can use the whole bandwidth of the transmission channel. Right? Same time, same frequency, but no collision. Right? Because each of them has separate key. Each of them is modulated with some other separate key. So because of that, we don't have any because of this we can serve many people each sender has a unique random number each transmitter will have some unique random number the sender exhausts us with this random number <coughs> sorry the sender like he'll do XOR with the signal um, <coughs> we'll be having message signal we'll be random having random number we'll be doing XOR operation between those signals the receiver can tune into the signal if no if it knows the pseudo random noise is done by a correlation function okay so this key is shared this whatever random number is there this is shared with receiver only who has that like he'll be having that random number so based on that random number he'll be tuning his things he'll be tuning his receiver uh, based on so only he can receive at that time even though others receive they can't decrypt that key and uh, and they can't receive like they can't uh, decode the signal so only the assigned person particular person to whom it is concerned only he'll be capable of receiving that signal A disadvantage is higher complex the receiver because uh, the receiver cannot just listen into the medium and start receiving if there is a signal 
right he can't just receive the signal and uh, he can't just uh, do further actions he has to send he has to receive the signal and he has to decode the signal and uh, he has to tune his circuit in that ranges in that frequency ranges and then only he can further process so the receiver circuit will be little bit complex all signals should have the same strength at the receiver whenever you receive signals all the signals should have the same strength mm, advantages will be all terminals can use the same frequency right same no planning needed no need of planning only thing is you need to have some receiver circuit which will tune and you also in the transmitter side will to take care of the things or operations and those things while transmitting so in future also you will be having circuit okay uh, huge code space compared to the frequency space right since we are having in frequency space it's like bandwidth will be wasted and only limited purpose will be, some limited purpose will be served here it is not the thing as i told you as the number of bits increases the number of person served will also increase like code space will be huge interference is not coded white noise is not coded you know what is noise and what is white noise and i i hope you know what is signal to noise ratio also uh, can you tell me uh, if signal to noise like how the ratio should it should be signal to noise ratio should be high or low what is the ideal condition or else what is the good condition is it should be good or low for a good trans signal to noise ratio please do uh, respond <coughs> we have more things to discuss yeah anyway uh, i want to continue uh, signal to noise ratio is nothing signal signal in the sense our message signal divided by noise signal so noise is nothing but some unwanted signal so only what we want is the our signal message signal so signal to noise ratio in the sense it should be high right signal ratio should be high and the denominator should be less denominator in the sense noise should be less so signal to noise ratio should be high you will be having signal to noise ratio signal to interference ratio and these things whenever you are calculating something whenever you want to check your channel condition you sent something and you received something then what you will be doing in order to know what is the percentage of signal you will be uh, what is the received thing received thing di divided by that noise ratio and interference ratio what is the transmitted thing and what is the received thing okay based on that you will be calculating what is the noise and interference percentage together uh, this is interference and forward error correction and uh, uh, encryption can be easily integrated you should have these things right encryption in the sense like whenever you do this and uh, uh, xor operations using this pseudo and random noise code like encryption is done these things can be easily integrated and cdma suppose we'll take some examples here see <coughs> a equal to 1 this is suppose sender we are we are having two senders a and b sender a is sending Sender A is having the keys zero one double zero double. Is it visible? Please let me know if something is not visible, so that I I can increase I can zoom out. I can zoom in it. Sorry. Okay. Uh, we are having two senders. Sender A has one. One is the message, and key is nothing. Key here we are having zero one double zero double one. So zero will be. as zero will be decoding it as minus 1 and 1 will be yeah fine yeah 1 will be 1 0 will be minus 1 so while sending this signals we will be doing this operation i think you know what is correlation and convolution right anyway here we will be doing duplication only simple multiplication ad into ak so whenever you do this operation with this then you will be getting 0 into 1 will be Zero is considered as minus one. Please do remember. And this all there are Walsh codes, and there are many types of codes. One codes will like Walsh codes will be considering zero as minus one and one as one. Whereas some other codes, Barker codes, these things will be considering zero as zero and one as one. So based on the coding technique, you will be considering zero as minus one or zero as zero. Okay. There are uh, other codings like different codings. Uh, please uh, do go through that. If you get any doubt, you can get back to me. and here if we check this 
1 into 0 will be like 1 into 0 means minus 1. So we are just doing the multiplication. Message signal is multiplied with these, these many number of bits. 1 into 1 will be plus 1. 0, 0 into 1 will be minus 1. 0 into 1 will be, since 0 is considered as minus 1, minus 1 into 1 will be minus 1. 1 into 1 plus, like this we are, this one is the thing which we are sending. We are having message signal as only one bit message. For one bit message, we are having a sequence, we are having a key of uh, almost six bits key we are having. So this six bits when multiplied with one bit, when multiplied with message signal, the output will obviously be six bits, right? So this is the key. Uh, after multiplying, whatever which we are sending it out so this is a thing which we are sending it out as is the thing which we are sending it out so and similar way sender b sender b has zero message signal so it has the key this key double one zero one zero one is the key and here also same we'll be doing here also zero will be considered as minus one and one will be considered as plus one and we'll be doing multi multiplication operation and after that the output is this this one is the thing minus one minus one plus one minus one plus one minus one this is the thing which we are sending out so a is sending one thing b is sending one thing the message sent from a is one and the message sent from b is zero so see how they are out into the air they are going as this sequence some six bit sequence they are going out this is different sequence right so this we are transmitting into a then receiver side also will be sharing this common keys. A will be sharing this key to the assigned receiver and B also will be sharing the assigned key to uh, its own receiver. So we'll see how it decodes. Both signals superimpose in space. Interference neglected. Suppose there is uh, an ideal case, we can neglect it, but normally we'll be having much more interference. And noise, everything is... Um, uh, everything is neglected here. Uh, now, we'll, what we'll be doing is, we are combining these two signals. Suppose, since you have transmitted it into the A, like it will be, it will be like we, some superimposing will happen in the space, right? So, whenever you add both of these things, okay, here minus 1 minus 1 will be minus 2, plus 1 minus 1 will be 0. Minus 1 plus 1, 0. Minus 1 minus 1, minus 2. Plus 1 plus 1, plus 2. Plus 1 minus 1 will be 0. Re receiver wants to receive signal from sender A. So whenever you send it into free space, it will be like this. Two signals superimposed on each other and you will be sending it. Then after receiving your signal, you will be receiving signal. Uh, suppose receiver concerned with re sender A, receive, it want to receive only, uh, that receiver only wants to receive, suppose, uh, signal A. Then what it will do is, it will take this from the A which it got is this sequence, is minus one, zero, zero. It will take that sequence and it will multiply with the key, A's key. A's key is nothing but zero, one, double, zero, one, one, right? So it will multiply that. Whenever it multiplies that, it will get some random number random like it will multiply and it will do the summation of that and it will get some number <coughs> right if that number is greater than one you can say that your message signal is one if the number is less than zero then it will be then we will be saying if that uh, summation is less than zero then it will be decoded as zero so whenever you want to re that uh, receiver want to receive only the b signal then what it will be doing is same thing it will be doing it will be the output the signal which is received at the receiver it in product of b key then after doing the summation the thing is like the output is minus 6 it will be considered as zero i hope it is clear it is clear right simple if you go through this you'll uh, understand hope it is clear yeah, uh, this is some levels. Here you are having, uh, this is the data signal and this is the key signal. And uh, if you see the data signal, it is ones followed by zeros followed by ones. If you see the key, it is a pulse signal with some uh, zeros and ones. So this is the key, key decoded here, 0, 1, 0, 1, double 0, 1. And A sequence is all ones till here and then zeros. Right, so then uh, whenever we do this XR operation, the output will be this 1010. 0, 1, 0. See, 1 XR with 0, 1. Then uh, 1 with 1, 0, 0. 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. 
बोथ विल बी वन राइट हियर इफ यू सी दिस की इज जीरो डेटा इज वन सो द आउटपुट इज वन हियर वन वन बोथ आर वन की एंड डेटा सो वन एंड वन जीरो जीरो वन 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 एंड वन जीरो जीरो Like we will be do, we will be having XOR operations here. After this, this is the thing. We output sequence is this one zero one zero one. This thing is the output sequence. Okay. After this, we are trying to extract this using the uh, using the OR option. We, like whatever explained in the previous thing, same thing is applicable. What the thing is here, we are just representing in the signals form. Okay. After uh, doing with key, then we are able to retrieve. Then we can also get the signal. So whenever you are transmitting the signal, the this signal here, whenever you are transmitting it out, this is the thing which you are transmitting outside. You go. Hope you got it. You are clear, right? First thing is message signal, then key signal. Key is represented in bit form, and then operation XOR operation, and then followed by signal which is transmitted into the air. This has that. It is clear, right? Yeah. Okay, this is like uh, uh, what can I say? Like we are having like many transmitters, so many of them will be sending. So what we'll be having is we are having levels. So this is level two. This is simple thing. First one is simple thing with one bit. Whenever your message signal increases in bits, uh, then your uh, like your key will also increase. The number of bits also increases. As a result, the output will be in this form. Like uh, if you see the first example, there we are having plus six. Plus six. How if you see this a first signal in this uh, uh, di diagram, the first signal is the normal signal a, and the second signal is the data signal of b, and this is the key of b. And this is the XOR opera operation of data with B. Okay, then this is the uh, B signal which is transmitted into the air. Now A signal, A signal in the sense in the previous example in the previous slide we have seen what is transmitted into air is this thing, the first thing. And after B also encrypted with some uh, key, the output is this. So whenever they are superimposed, the output will be this. And whenever receiver wants to receive only A, what it will be doing is it will be doing Doing that operation corresponding uh, multiplication and addition, and see this is the data signal of A, right? right? So whenever he want to uh, receiver want A signal, he will be using A S key, and he will be doing multiplication operation, and this is the output generated. And whenever he wants to receive, like similarly, whenever he wants to receive B S thing, he will be uh, multiplying with B S signal, and he will be re receiving the output like this. Will be decoding like this. So only who has that concerned key will be able to decode the signals. This is the integrator output and this is the comparator output. Comparator and the difference. You know right what is integration and what is comparator. And this is signal level five. If some the wrong key, suppose you want to you are some other receiver uh, instead of A and B, some other receiver is trying to decode this signal which has A and B superimposed. So with some wrong key, it will be decoding and the output. <coughs> with that key it will be multiplying now the output is like this which is an invalid output so it is unable to decode since it has some invalid key it is unable to decode is this clear yeah this is the comparison actually i want to cover gprs that is the reason i am making it little bit faster but i think you hope it is clear mm, then this, these are the some of the differences between sdma tdma fdma and cdma so in sdma simple thing is what is the basic idea is in sdma you will be segmenting space into cells and sectors where dma you are just having time slots see segment sending time into disjoint time slots demand driven or fixed patterns and uh, in uh, fdma frequency bands you will be having sub bands and in cdma you will be using orthogonal codes okay <coughs> Yes, only one terminal can be active in one cell or one sector. In one sector or one cell, you will be having only one base station, double base station. If you have multiple 
basis in one cell, so it will cause interference, right? So only one terminal can be used in one cell vector. All terminals are active for short periods of time. Yeah, obviously, because many terminals will be served on the different time slots. So it will have all terminals active for short periods of time, on the same frequency. Every terminal has its own frequency. Since every terminal is assigned with pair of frequencies, one for uplink and one for downlink. And all the terminals can be active. See, in CDMA, the more advantage is every terminal can be active any time because everyone will be using same frequency and same time, but they are using some, some other orthogonal codes. Different orthogonal in the sense, they are, norm, they are uh, not having the same codes. Like, no collision will happen. The codes also, while selecting that uh, random numbers also, if something happens, some collision happens, it will send some nag kind of thing. While selecting this, collision may happen while selecting the randomness collision may happen but they'll be having like it will be waiting for random time and again it will be saying data won't get collided here so all the terminals will be uh, active at the same time at the same moment uninterrupted unless and until they select the same random number and signal will be cell structure you know directed antennas and synchronization in time domain filtration in time, uh, frequency domain and code in the code plus in the sense code receiver i mean uh, in the receiver of CDMA, uh, there will be complexity. So there will be one, uh, the, the receiver should have the decoding capability. So codes and advantages very, advantages of SDMA is <coughs> very simple, increases capacity for kilometer square, established, DDMA established fully digital and it is flexible obviously. A simple established and robust, but the bandwidth may waste, may get wasted and in CDMA less frequency planning needed. Yeah, of, co of course, it's because the same frequency can be used, we no need, no need of planning, any of obviously, and soft handover, you know what is uh, soft and what is hard handover, right? Uh, inflexible uh, antennas typically fixed in SDMA, yeah, and TDMA will be having guard spaces needed because uh, the slot of user A may get collided with slot of user B. The ending time of user A may be collided with the starting of B, right? So we need guard spaces. And uh, inflexible because frequencies like bandwidth is very costly. Even then, we are assigning uh, two frequencies per per user, which is uh, not good and uh, which is like inflexible. And frequencies are a scarce resource since bandwidth is very costly. Uh, <coughs> complex receivers needs more complicated power, obviously. Uh, because you need to decode that signal and you need to have those tuning thing in your circuit in CDMA. Only combin only uh, in SDMA, only in combination with TDMA, these are the combinations possible and the standard in wireless networks where these are some of the applications. It is like frequency hopping and the CMA frequency reuse concepts and still faces some problems, higher complexity. Yeah, the complexity is the main thing which involved in CDMA and uh, lowered expectations will be integrated. This is also we can integrate with TDMA and FDMA. These are the types of uh, combinations possible. SDMA can be inte uh, integrated with TDMA, FDMA or CDMA. Whereas CDMA can be integrated with TDMA or FDMA. These are the things. I hope it is clear. It is clear, right? Are you having any doubts? Yeah, let me quickly start with GPRS. Meanwhile, if you have, if you are having any doubts, you can get back. You can ask me. Okay. Uh, in GPRS, uh, in uh, GSM, we are having circuit switch network, whereas in GPRS, we are having packet switch network. So, what are, what is GPRS? What are the characteristics? What are the nodes present in it? And what is the interface? And how security is enabled in GPRS? These are the things. And uh, see, in GPRS, GPRS, the full form of this is General Packet Radio Service. This is the first G, I mean, first generation, I mean, first, first in the sense where uh, packet switching came into the picture. This is called as 2.5G, basically, and from this only packet switching has, uh, General Packet Radio Service is the form of that, general, not restricted GSM, and uh, the packet radio enables packet mode of communicable air 
will be using packets instead of point to point circuits which you know right point to point communication will be there and once uh, they are done with that communication then we will collapse that communication and then we can have some other communication with some other person here that is not the case even though they are communicated the packets can traverse in the same path okay so this is packet mode of communication service node system existing uh, for this gprs existing bss will be sufficient whereas partial nss should be modified okay main main benefits of this are resources are reserved only when needed and charged accordingly only whenever we need resources then only they will be allocated to us and uh, charges will also be saved according to the usage number of connection like uh, for in order to set up connection there will be some process that process is reduced in gprs and enables new service of opportunity like new things like terminals can be not terminals exactly new networks can be new services can be provided by gprs these are some of the advantages and uh, what are the characteristics in the sense in gprs you will be having packet switched uh, packet switched resource allocation resources allocated only when data is to be sent like a demand on demand like whenever you need resources then only resources will be allocated and once you, your usage is done the resources will be teared down okay <coughs> flexible channel allocation you are having 1 to 8 time slots the channel allocation will be flexible you are having 80 active users like whenever someone needs then only the slot will be allocated to them available resources shared by active users whoever are active can use the resources uplink and downlink channels reserved separately both uplink is different and downlink channel there are circuits which gsm does use same time slots alternatively they can use same time slots but in alternate traffic characteristics suitable for gprs is bursty transmissions we are having that frame transmission bursty hyper frame number like this bursty transmissions are suitable for this frequent transmissions of small volumes of data uh, infrequent transmission of large volumes of data these are the things which are suitable for gprs Uh, coming to the architecture see when you see the architecture for gsm and gprs it is almost the same the only thing which got changed is sgsn and ggsn if you see here in uh, b uh, in network subsystem we will be having roller like hlr and vlr like base station subsystem will be having bts and bsc here in network subsystem you will be having HL, hlr vlr and msc here the extra nodes will be eir you are uh, familiar with that only thing is sgsn and ggsn gprs architecture gsm together with gsn G, like gsn is gsn full form in the, is serving gsn serving uh, gsn and uh, ggsn is gateway gsn gateway um, we'll see the functionalities of both it uses packet switching obviously in gprs we have switching faster than gsm since if you say packet it will obviously be faster and also it uses cdma okay enable simultaneous transmission of packets same yeah as i told you in circuit switching there will be point to point but here it is not the case you can have you can uh, transmit the packets related to multiple users at the same time sgsn and ggsn will be explained now see these are the two things <clears throat> there are two network nodes used to offer packet data service one is serving gprs and the other is gateway gprs in order to serve the like packet data service whenever you want whenever you want your data services 3g and 4g whenever you are browsing something then though in gprs it will be supported with the help of these two nodes data services will be supported with the help of serving gsn and uh, gateway gsn what are the functionalities of serving gsn serving gprs support node is one of the gprs support node it is one of the type of obviously gprs node and here the functionalities include routing the switched data to and from the mobile station right you are having mobile station and you are having some outside network public switch telephone network or packet data network. so from that you are getting some data into your mobile so that routing should be done right whenever you are getting some data your mobile is getting some data from from some external resource that the data should be routed right this routing thing will be done by this sgsn 
routing the packet switched uh, data to and from the mobile station. So and throw things will be taken care routing of packets like to which uh, thing you we need to send and these things will be taken care by the uh, whenever you are uploading some data so to which ip address this should be routed and whenever you are getting some incoming data you are using two services maybe two to three services one is voice service you are making a call and the other service may be date services you are using br some browsing or you are using, watching some videos then you are having two you are connected to two things two networks so then network in the sense not operator your network in the sense two services like you are connected to two services then uh, the things which are related to like video related things or browsing things will have some ip be allocated to one thing and these things whenever you are doing voice call same user but that allocation like that routing will be done by the hdsm mobility management you know whenever user is mobile <coughs> user can't stay at single place whenever he is roaming it should be like roaming and whenever he is in the home network it is normal network these kind of things where he is and um, the tracking things uh, tracking things will come under location management mobility is normal mobility of the user like uh, uh, like he is mobile or he is roaming or those things Location management in the sense where he is and uh, based on that what are the like uh, you know right what SS will take care of this and M MSE will update this location where he is these things to location management resistance uh, location management uh, authentication and charges whether he is a valid subscriber or not and these things anyway I explained in GSM so I am uh, going it little bit faster same things will be coming here the only thing is the only these instead of there this location management is taken care by MSE over there but here this is taken care by SGSM mobility management their connection control mobility management location control these things are taken care by msc whereas here mobility management location management and authentication is correct and charging of calls these things are taken care by sdsn stores the location information of the user the location of the user will be stored here and users profile these things these are the things which is supported by sdsn it is clear right Are you getting? Please do respond. You are getting right or uh, you want me to repeat some things? Yeah, fine. Uh, this is DGSN. DGSN is nothing but gateway support, gateway GPR support node. Here what? Here gateway in the sense gateway is nothing but one gate which will it will be normal gate. If you are having some there, you will be having gate. Like it will check if it is valid. If it is valid, okay, let it go in. If it is not valid, well, let it stop them. So gateway in the sense it will only take care if it is valid user or valid thing or not so here I provide a gateway between GPRS and PDN PDN in the sense as I told you for every service you will be having one PDN like APN uh, access point name for uh, um, for voice calls you will be having one PDN and for uh, data services you will be having other PDN so this this acts as the gateway between this GPRS and PDN DGSN uh, convert data from SGSN to PDP packet. So, SG, see, SGSN sits here and PDN will be sitting here. In between, we'll be having that will be converted by this gateway GGSN. Whatever it is given by SGSN, it will convert to the data uh, packet and then it will send it to PDN gateway. So, it's the current SGSN address? It will take care of the address like what it what is the incoming uh, and what it is sending out stores the location of user in its location register it also stores the uh, location of the user perform authentication and charging functions and it also function uh, it also has uh, responsibility of uh, authentication since it is gateway it will definitely have the authentication thing and the other thing is it will uh, convert the data into the required format and the other thing will be charging things and it will keep track of uh, user's location in, by storing it in the location register. Yeah, these are the four systems as you already know GSS, BSS, NSS, and RSS.
let us see in detail bss is nothing but base station subsystem base station subsystem uh, here when compared with gsm he is talking uh, bss system needs to enhancement to recognize and send packet data some enhancements should be needed in bss subsystem in order to uh, support gprs like some enhancements should be done gsm bss in order to support it, uh, support that same bss to uh, gprs bss includes as you know base stations and uh, mobile stations network subsystem includes these things it, in, it includes a number of sdsns okay serving uh, gateways so serving things it will have serving G, serving gsn it will have a number of things um, also consists of a number of MSCs. It also has number of MSCs and helps in authentication, operation and maintenance of server subsystem. Authentication process, operation, operation in the sense operation related to whether uh, what he subscribed to. He is he a privileged user and what are the what are the services he subscribed? Are we giving the app services? What is the quality of service that should be maintained? These things. And maintenance in the sense like till how much time that call should be there till how much time he should be given the services these things maintenance of that user when the call should be terminated and uh, those things will be taken care here the same things authentic whenever I talk authentication operation and maintenance same things as GSM but there that will be taken care by one network element here it is taken care by some other network elements here since we are having SGSN coming into the picture some of the responsibilities of MSA are transferred to SGSN and GGSN in, in GPRS other than that everything will yeah this is the thing uh, here SIM and ME mobile uh, equipment and the base station subsystem it has gas BSE and network subsystem will have this HLR MSC VLR and here so this is the architecture msc will be connected to sgsn sgsn will be connected to ggsn ggsn is gateway you know this and this gateway is now connected to external network pdn network it is clear right so this is the architecture so in the previous thing this this msc this msc is directly connected to outside network but here it is not the case we have sgsn and ggsn in between so the number of services will also be increased because of this and uh, coming to this radio station subsystems uh, as we told there are four things in this radio station subsystem radio station in the sense that the uh, station bit like the medium between air and and the uh, base station is nothing but radio so that thing consists of a number of ms bts and bss mobile station having G gprs capability so whenever you want to connect to gprs your phone should be capable of connecting to that gprs so if suppose now we got that geo sims right in that geo sims now it should be voice over lte whenever your phone supports that voice over lte then only you can uh, serve the purpose of free calling free voice calls then only you can make if you are having that uh, vol so these things your phone should support the corresponding feature in order to have in order to utilize those similarly image that mobile station should have the gprs capability stores cipher key sequence in order to do encryption and decryption uh, it will that keys will be stored over here and gateway coming to gateway gateway has shown in the previous diagram it consists of sgsn and ggsn provides connections to other networks and pda yeah you know right so we, uh, anyway it is explained gateway subsystem pda is public data network public data network and private data network we are having different uh, kinds of network based on the purpose and purpose will be connected to, to the specified network gprs other home components is hlr registers users profile and response to queries from gsn same thing and mobile station is your mobile phone or device sms used for sms transmission if you want to like <coughs> do message then you will be using this for sms transmission via sgs see these are some of the acronyms like gprs you know ms you know base station base station controller mobile service switching center hlr authentication center equipment identity register vlr the only things which got added is here it is not mentioned ggs and sgs now i hope you know the functionalities of ggs and also sgs right 
conclusion is CPRS provides efficient access to packet data networks. Yeah, because because it is transmitted via packets, so the efficiency will be increased and uh, data like whenever you use data, the data the data services will be will <clears throat> whenever we have packet switching, then only we'll have the data services in an efficient manner and then only will be and multiple slot operation in GPRS leads to efficient channel utilization. Since you are having many slots, then the efficiency will be increased, right? And the number of users will be allocated with different slots and uh, the efficiency of uh, frequency utilization also channel utilization will be increased gpr is just more effective for long packet data transmissions than short one then short one if you are continuously using the data services then gprs will be very helpful when compared with other things yeah these are some of the references yeah it's already 10 37 i think you have few more minutes with this I think first two chapters are covered, uh, but please do let me know if you have some other topics like different types of codes. These things I uh, but not of that important. So if you read that, you'll come to know. It's only like bits, uh, bits decoded uh, like in something it will be a zero, whereas in something it will decode zero as minus one. And uh, and do you have any doubts? in Mac and uh, first chapter like wireless technology the topics covered are wireless just a second yeah first mobile communications introduction chapter is anyway it's a combination right uh, what is the architecture you're having hardware software and uh, um, like uh, what are the languages that should be used these were discussed and what are the mobile devices and uh, data dissemination i just gave an overview that will be continued from the next session mobility management you yeah that was security was explained and after that you are having different devices like palm tabs and uh, uh, like what are the operating systems pocket computers these things and gsm gsm you are clear i guess calling and handovers and checking mechanisms architecture radio interfaces gsm architecture and GPRS architecture is very important. Please go through that differences between GSM and GPRS also. That nodes, two nodes which added extra, and what are the functionalities of that? Just go through that. And uh, and uh, yeah, and one more thing is this wireless medium. Wireless medium is of very important. TDMA, FDMA, CDMA, and SDMA. Just go through that. What are the basic differences? How the waveforms look like? How the module like, and uh, the other thing will be modulations. How the modulations will be? What are digital modulations and what are analog modulations? What are the differences between them? And uh, what are the mediums? Different types of mediums. Wired, wireless, uh, and uh, what else? These things: handover, security, calling, localization, GPRS. Circuit switch network differences between circuit switch and packet switching is also very important. Mm, yeah, OFDM is nothing but uh, OFDM is but OFDM is you uh, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. This orthogonal frequency division multiplexing is used in 4G. Here in in frequency division multiplexing, we will be having two pair of frequencies, like one pair of frequencies, one one out of which one is allocated for uplink and one is out allocated for downlink right whereas in OFDM we are whatever bandwidth is assigned in that bandwidth will be making sub bands and in that sub bands will be having sub carriers like each sub carrier is of 15 kilohertz in that that sub carriers are aligned in such a way that both are orthogonal to each other so in this way we are having number of sub carriers increased suppose the Suppose in FDMA we are having 100 kilohertz. That 100 kilo, in that 100 kilohertz, 50 kilohertz is assigned for downlink and 50 kilohertz is for uplink. Whereas in OFDMA they divided that uh, bandwidth into multiple thing, multiple channels. So in, in in that 100, 100 divided by 15 suppose. Because in LTE in OFDM each carrier occupies 15 kilohertz of bandwidth. So by dividing it into 15 kilohertz, Kilohertz, 100 divided by 50 kilo, 15 kilohertz. So that many number of users are served in OFDM. The only thing is in order to avoid the collision, in order to avoid the interference between uh, adjacent things, orthogonality, adjacent carriers, orthogonality is ma maintained in OFDM.
okay this is one more thing which is used in uh, lte this is the thing which is used in lte uh, is everything clear so uh, in mac layer and uh, these things gsm gtrs mobile devices and mobile communications first two chapters you get any doubts you can always mail me you can uh, get in coordinate also i will take the email id and mobile number of your uh, coordinator i'll check with ramakrishna garu and uh, if you have any doubts you can just mail them and if you want then i can plan some other session or onwards you will be having a database session followed by ad hoc networks and uh, applications yeah it's all from my side is it clear yeah i'll enable now for both things i'll be enable you can uh, take it and you can download it yeah any doubts you are clear right yeah okay fine next session will be on databases so that is the reason i am asking you if you want if you want any things like any topics in these two say two these two chapters were assigned to me actually so if you have any doubts